Welcome to our discussion of Chinese families with kindergarten aged children. My research proposal focused on Chinese families with kindergarten aged children and specifically parents' expectations and priorities for their children as they entered early childhood education, as they entered preschool. My goal for you is that you would learn a little bit more about Chinese families, specifically with regard to those families with kindergarten age children, regarding how they parent those children and also their expectations and hope for their education. And I hope that we can practice applying cultural insights to ministry with a mini case study at the end of this module in which we consider how some of the insights and the content that we discuss would influence and change our ministry practice among families like those that we will discuss. I hope you enjoyed our readings. The doctoral dissertation by Ren was valuable because it doesn't focus strictly on education but zooms out and gives us more overall background on Chinese parenting, especially in the context of Chinese families, as well as Chinese society and culture. Nyland's study, meanwhile, gave us more specific data on parent expectations and evaluations of kindergarten services that are very representative of the literature. I also thought that Nyland and both studies, but especially Nyland's study, was a very good example for us of mixed methods cross-cultural research in how they planned for, executed, and then reported uh, the research. And uh, it was just very, very valuable to see that methodology walked out now after we'd taken that class and can analyze a bit more what's going on. So let's look at some broader trends influencing Chinese families. One policy that you've probably heard of is the one child policy, which restricted families to having only one child per family. This began to be enforced in roughly 1980 and continued until 2016, when it was expanded to allow for two children per family. It was enforced more strictly in urban areas and less strictly in rural areas. There's one small city bordering the city that I'm in that is well known for having families with lots of children. And there, there have been many exceptions, but the rule was still extensively enforced, meaning there were lots of abortions, forced and unforced, and many baby girls in particular were aborted because of the preference for sons to carry on the family line. So a real, real tragedy there. This has led to a phenomenon that some people call the 4 2 1 phenomenon, where in a three generation household, you'll have four grandparents, two parents, and one grandchild, which you can imagine would put a lot of pressure on that grandchild to do well in school, work, and then life. Because, not only because they are the only representative in their generation of the whole family and they're carrying on the hopes of the generations before them, but also because when they become adults, they will need to care for their parents and for any uh, grandparents who are still alive. It's interesting now that the rule has been expanded uh, to see going forward how that will affect uh, young families and kindergarten education. The kids who are in kindergarten right now were born right before the one child policy was expanded to two, two children. And children born after 2016 uh, are gonna be turning three in the next, three, four, five in the next couple of years and entering the kindergarten system. So this will be interesting to see how many more siblings uh, begin to attend school together. At our school, the Fountains, most children are, are only children, but we do have a good number of, of siblings, including even a group of three, three siblings. Another trend is one that was alluded to in the research, not as heavily emphasized, 
but I saw it enough that I think it's worth mentioning. More women are joining the workforce. More and more moms are going to work. I don't know their position alongside men in the workforce, if there's equality there or equal opportunity, but more and more moms are going to work and that's increasing demand for early childhood services. One study looked at the connection between the availability of preschool and parents' ability to go to work. And then finally, there are three generation homes. It's very common in China for adult children to have their parents or their in-laws come live with them and be taken care of. And when mom and dad go to work, this often means that grandparents are the primary caregivers for the children. The children are often raised by their grandparents. Some families will also employ a nanny who fills that, that same function, taking care of the home and raising the children while mom and dad are at work. As we look at some societal dynamics influencing Chinese families with kindergarten age children, I should start by mentioning that preschool is not mandated by the government. School begins to be mandatory at elementary school. And a common quote in the literature was that parents did not want their children to fall behind at the starting line of their academic educations. The Chinese education system is known for its intense pressure. There are entrance exams for elementary school, middle school, high school, and in a sense, the whole system builds towards the very intense college examination, college entrance examination, the Gaokao. In fact, at the beginning of this past June, we just had another round of high school seniors taking the test and it determines college placement and that pressure of that whole system trickles down even to early childhood education. There's pressure for kindergartners to start learning English. Parents want to send their children to a good kindergarten. If they have the money, they'll pay for after school classes. And here at the Fountains, the kindergarten where I work, we've even had prospective parents ask about our kindergarten graduates acceptance rates into local elementary schools. Something else interesting to note is that most of the respondents in the research were mothers. They were women. We can't say definitively from the research that I read why. One study mentioned that the fathers were simply less available. It could be that more mothers are not working full time, more mothers are at home. Uh, caring for their children. It could be that they are more involved with their children's education. I know that here at the Fountains, we see many more mothers than fathers. And though I can't say definitively why, it is something to note. 